After watching this video, you should be able to understand what is meant by latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. In order to explain this, let's see what happens when we heat up a solid. In this case, our solid, we shall choose it to be a familiar one, like water, um, turned into ice, so the solid is ice, and let's consider one kilogram of ice at minus 50 degrees C. If we supply or add thermal energy to that one kilogram of ice, its temperature will increase, and it will go higher to minus 40, 30, and so on, and it will continuously do that until it reaches zero degrees C. Up until this stage, the ice was solid, and uh, it was just getting hotter and hotter, and we supplied an amount of thermal energy, Q1. Now, further increasing the amount of thermal energy supply will not increase the temperature of the ice. It will still remain at zero, but what will happen is that the energy that is provided will now turn the solid into a liquid. So, in this area here, we have a solid-liquid mixture. After supplying an amount of thermal energy up to Q2, what will happen now is that all the um, <coughs> ice has now turned to water at this point here, after we've added an amount of thermal energy of Q2, and further addition of thermal energy will result in a rise in temperature again, in a linear fashion, up until it reaches 100 degrees C. Now, we know that at 100 degrees C, something happens to water. It vaporizes. So as we can see here, there was an amount of energy supplied from Q1 to Q2, so Q2 minus Q1, and that energy was used to change the phase from a solid into a liquid. We could measure that amount of energy, and this amount of energy is what we know as the latent heat of fusion. So in summary, the latent heat of fusion is the amount of thermal energy that we need to supply in order to change a solid into a liquid without changing its temperature. So when we have supplied an amount of energy Q3 and our one kilogram of ice has now become 100 degrees, uh, has now become a liquid water at 100 degrees C, in fact, the addition of further energy does not increase the temperature of the liquid, or the water in this case, um, above 100 degrees C, but what it does is it begins to convert the liquid into a gas. So in this range here, we have a liquid-gas mixture, and the more thermal energy applied, the less liquid and the more gas we have, up to a particular point where all the liquid has now turned into a gas and further supply of thermal energy will just simply increase the temperature of the gas. Now, this amount of thermal energy from Q3 to Q4, let's just represent it here, was the amount of thermal energy required to change the material from a liquid into a gas to make this phase change without changing its temperature. That is called Again, the latent heat, but in this case, it's the latent heat of vaporization. So in summary, the latent heat is the energy required for a phase change. The latent heat of fusion is the energy required for the solid-liquid phase change. The latent heat of vaporization is the energy required for the liquid-gas phase change. In fact, it's actually the minimum energy required to make the change. You will notice here that the latent heat of vaporization represents a larger number than the latent heat of fusion. This is because to convert a liquid into a gas requires more energy. We have to break up the bonds of the liquid-liquid bonds totally to make it into a gas which has absolutely no bonds between its particles. Whereas to convert a solid into a liquid, all we need to do is, um, we can think about it in terms of loosening the bonds and not completely breaking them up. That takes less energy. Now, the specific latent heat of fusion is the latent heat of fusion per kilogram. Similarly, the specific latent heat of vaporization is the latent heat of vaporization per kilogram. <coughs> 